Son de nada. See, my beard, hang on. Beard, right? Beard's getting a bit thicker. It's getting me in trouble with Mrs. Lewis because she doesn't like it when it's this big. I actually, I'm thinking of kind of like big bearding, you know? Big beard. If I, if, if you want the bigger beard, comment below. Because what I'll do is I'll say, there's data to her. And this will not persuade her in the least that I should grow my beard bigger but it'll amuse me to do it anyway so do me a favor just comment below big beard thank you right what up team lovely to have you aboard very warm welcome to you bit of a quick one today what I'm starting is a new project for my kids as it happens now we give our kids some pocket money and it turns out that tracking how much pocket money they've got is supremely challenging weirdly enough um, so I'm gonna be building an app that allows me to track my kids pocket money so that when they say can I buy that we can go eh, yes you can you've got enough money for that and they can decide uh, for example, how much of their weekly pocket money they want to save and uh, how much they want to give away and that kind of stuff. So I thought, I've done it before, but I can do it again. I'm going to build it with you in mind, as in I'm going to share my process with you if you want to come along for the ride. Today, I want to talk about testing. Yes, I'm actually going to test my own projects. I don't know. Now all the code is going to go up on GitHub. You can see in the description below uh, where I'm going to pop it. Uh, it'll probably be github.com slash Paul Lewis slash pocket money. I'm guessing as a guess. What a guess. Anyway, right. So what do we got on screen? We have the package JSON, which is for the project. Now there's a lot of dev dependencies and all that kind of stuff uh, in here. And there are a couple of scripts as well. One is going to be the build script, which is going to get rid of the dist folder and run the TypeScript compiler because this is a TypeScript project. And then the other one is Karma Start, which starts the test. And that's where we're going to be spending most of our time today. You can have a look through uh, this on the GitHub repo if you want to. So that's the package JSON. Uh, the next thing to probably go and look at is the Karma Config. Now, the Karma Config, I'm not going to spend all my time talking about this because, again, you can go and look at it in detail. But I will tell you that what we have in here uh, of interest is Karma TypeScript. The Karma TypeScript is here to convert the TypeScript source across for uh, the test runner to run. So it converts it to ES5, and I'll come on to why uh, in a little while, uh, because it's a little bit uh, funny there in the middle. Um, it's to do with the test coverage. So now you know, but we'll get to it. Uh, and then down here, we're telling it that we want to run Chrome headless as the browser that we want to test against. You can do it so that you run against multiple browsers. So Firefox, Safari, Chrome, all that good stuff. And single run basically means run it to the end and then um, give me the results. You can do single run false, in which case it becomes more interactive. So if you need to debug a test, you can do that. So package JSON has a bunch of stuff. Karma config is all set up to go. If you've not come across Karma before, head across to their website. Very, very good. Love it. Very handy. The reason I'm using Karma is because it allows me to actually test in the browser, which is really important to me. I don't really want to test in a fake environment. Uh, like uh, JS DOM or, or any of those other things. I just, I just, I want to test it in the browser, please. Thanks. Let's go and have a look at some of the actual source. So what we have here is the very first fake element. I say it's fake because it's. I mean, it's, it's it just. I mean, it's what eleven lines, and clearly I'm just doing this to demonstrate what's going on for you. We have a class called view, which is going to extend HTML element, which means I'm making a custom element here. If you're new to custom elements, have a Google of those and you can find out more about them. For now, just bear in mind that I'm making an element of my own very much as you would with a div or a span or whatever other element you like, pick one, I'm making one and uh, it's gonna be called view. And it has this uh, name internal, which is a string and it defaults it over to the name view. 
the constructor doesn't do anything, we'll make it do something in a little bit. And I have a getter so that I can get access to that name because it's private, this is TypeScript. By rights, I can't ask for the name, so uh, because it's private, so I have the getter here. So essentially I've got a read only, I suppose. And when this is compiled, uh, it'll put the, well, you can see, I mean, I'm sure I can build it and we'll have a look. Fellas, let's build it, let's build it. We will build it like so, we shall run that, we build, and inside dist there is view.js, and you can see this is the code that it creates. Sure, pretty reasonable, all good. Testing it though, let's have a look. So, what could we test? Probably not a lot here, um, but we have some code for testing, and it says import view from view, and then because I have created a custom element. I actually have to define the custom element against a particular tag name. So this is what custom elements.define is doing. It's saying if you come across something called x-view in the page, then it should be handled by the view class. Uh, in my case, if I say new view, I would also have to do this as well. Then I'm assuming that karma is going to inject chai and therefore I can pull a cert from chai. Uh, so I'm assuming a sort of global, if you will, at this point, uh, which will work just fine. And then we describe our test. I'm describing the view and I'm saying it has a default name. Uh, and then I, so I instantiate a view and I say, can you just check that view.name is going to equal view. All good. So what we can do now is we can actually run the test by just saying npm test, whoop, test here. And hopefully comma will start. And Chrome should boot up compiling yay my test ran and it executed one of one with success from chrome headless test passed great okay what we also got was a coverage report so if i go over here and i go to headless chrome and run this aha Oh, that's every every page. It decides to reset the zoom. OK, so we can see from this that I am testing in theory everything. OK, that's pretty good. I say in theory because there's some quirkiness to this that we will cover in but a moment. Let me add something to the view class over here. So let's say mm -mm, get other name. This is bizarre return foo doesn't really matter i'm doing this purely to demonstrate the point so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the test again which should work and then if we go back to the coverage and refresh it you see here it says this line wasn't tested you didn't run a test against this this i find really useful when i'm building stuff like this um i treat the coverage report as a bit of a guide on which functionality have I not tested yet. And so what I would then do, say, is uh, in my test, I'd say it has another name. Who writes code like this? New view, and then I can say assert.equal assert view.other name. Well, the name, yay, is the same as view. There we are, and pop that on the end there, so the linting is fine. And now, down here, when I run my test again, oh, it failed. One failed, one success. I wasn't paying, oh, I wasn't paying attention, folks. It wasn't view, it was foo. Well, there you go, so it's failed. That's a good thing. So now I can do this again. Huh. Uh, I'd like to say I did it on purpose. I didn't, I'll be honest with you. Now I've got two successes, look. Two successes, there we go. Cool, so that means that this will now go green or you know, not highlighted. Now for the eagle-eyed among you, you might be looking at this one little semicolon here and going, but why? Hmm. Well, the reason is it's complicated. Or at least it's sort of complicated. What's happening under the hood is that Karma TypeScript is converting the TypeScript to ES5 because Istanbul, which is what's providing this coverage report, 
only understands ES5, and then it's using source maps to reverse back out and show me the original TypeScript. The code that has been transpiled, the ES5 code that it's using to run the tests, has some branching code in here inside that constructor that's not being executed. So there's a branch that's not covered, which means that by the time it reverses back out, it says, oh, there was a branch that wasn't covered. Ooh. So what happens? Well, we get this little marker here that says, um, there was a branch that wasn't covered. Now we know this is not actually the case. There are ways to handle it. One is to just ignore it and not be too bothered by it. And frankly, that's what I would normally do. I wouldn't treat this as absolutely must, you know, cover everything and, you know, it's just, you know, the source of all truth. Not at all. I would say treat it as a bit of a signal. Now, if you are desperate to um, make it go away, you can do something like this where you do a comment and say Istanbul, ignore, say next. What that does is it tells Istanbul that you no longer wish it to consider, in this case, the constructor to be uh, something that needs coverage reporting. So we're going to go back, refresh, and now the 100% statements, 100% branches, 100% functions, 100% lines, one branch ignored, shh. Except that it's all good, right? It just, it just solved the problem. We told it that there's no problem here. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a very quick one, uh, and you can follow along uh, by hitting the link below. I will be trying to record videos as and when, so you can follow along the build process. I've not even done the design for it yet. And I'm honestly, I'm not going to get a design requirements from my wife about how to build this app for our kids. It might go very wrong. I've never really built an app for my wife before. Whatever. You're coming along. It's going to be a blast. All right, usual drill. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Ring the notification bell. Whatever. Just enjoy. I'll see you on the flip side.